¿Cómo están? Happy Monday! I trust that you have all had a wonderful weekend. Just listening to a little Bob Marley and the Whalers on my way into work. The irony that the song Rat Race is on <laughs> as I go to join the rat race and, you know, get this hustle going for my nine to five. But, um, yeah, so just wanted to touch base. I know we have not... I haven't been on since Tuesday night where I gave you that long update on what's been going on and uh, I don't know I mean I do know Woof! it was an exhausting weekend but a fantastic weekend and it was a really good week too I hit a new low yay 150.1 and I'm happy about it I was of course thinking that by Friday I would be seeing 150 148 around there but you know my body and I had a different plan and apparently I didn't wasn't a part of that plan but uh, Wednesday morning weighed in at 150.1 it was an eating day it was phenomenal workouts were great meals were great everything was on point and then Thursday was supposed to be a fasting day and on Thursday I wrote my little cheat sheet Bam, those are the weights for the few days. <laughs> but on Thursday, I woke up at 152.3, which is not a surprise, right? Because I'm eating late after the gym and nothing has had time to process or evacuate by Thursday morning. So I was 152.3 on Thursday, and that was supposed to be a fasting day. But what happened? Nine o'clock hit, and your girl consumed way, 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 way too many uh, protein bars. Like, way too many. I had two built bars because why not? You know, here I'm th of the notion that, hey, I can have three built bars on a fasting day and still lose weight. And that's true. However, I can't have two built bars plus five meal replacement bars for my isogenics and think that I'm going to lose weight. And it was really stupid, guys. I was totally driven by anxiety. Um, because I started to, you know, feelings were starting to pop up relative to this book that I'm reading, Bait of Satan, and, um, you know, stuff that I have to work on, and it drove me to eat out of anxiety, and still, I made decent choices. I had protein bars, but you can't have five meal replacements plus two snack bars and think that you're going to be okay, albeit I was still at a 1,500-calorie day, which would have been fine if I was eating, planning to eat, but whatevs. So, you know, on Friday morning, I still was down two pounds. So this theory holds true for me that if I'm having protein late night, I'm likely going to see a drop. Um, but I really should have been in the 140s if I was clean fasted. And it is what it is, you know, like I was okay with that. And I was actually even okay with the fact that I allowed myself to eat. I just wasn't okay with the way in which I ate. It felt so much like a binge to me that it just was so horribly uncomfortable. And I was really, really disappointed with the way that I ate the bars. Because your girl had five meal replacement bars waiting in line at CVS to pick up my thyroid medication. That's not okay. I wasn't in line for two hours. Just FYI. I was in line for like... 13 minutes. So that, that should put it into perspective for you. <sighs> anyway, Friday morning, I was 150.3, still down those two pounds, like I said, which I was grateful for and afraid that I might see the lag on Saturday because I was eating again on Friday after the gym. Now, Friday, I ate solo because my homie had to work on Saturday morning, which was fine. I still, you know, kept it fairly clean. I haven't had, to this point, hadn't had any crap. Truly hadn't had any crap. But Friday night, I decided to eat a full pint of ice cream. Full fat, full pint of ice cream. Phenomenal. I wish I could tell you the name of it. Punchline by Ben & Jerry's. I think it's a new flavor. Whew, like some sort of like sweet bourbon cream with cherries. I don't know. It's kind of like a play on Cherry Garcia, but not uh, different, but delicious. It has sliced almonds in it. And it's like, you know, 990 calories for the pint versus like the 1200 or more calories that you could get for the pint. Am I, am I boasting about this? No, but, but 
On Saturday morning, I was 150.9, so I was down from Friday's weigh-in of 151.3. Again, waiting for it to catch up with me because, oh no, I'm sorry, 150.3 was Friday morning, sorry. Then I had my pint of ice cream, and I was up one pound, 151.3 on Saturday. And I was like, what in the good Lord is happening here? But I was like, let's not look to gift, gift horse in the mouth, Eileen. Let's go with this and let's see what's happening. Because at this point, you've eaten Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's now Saturday, typically an eating day. And I kind of played it by ear. I was going to eat when I was hungry because I had plans on Sunday to get together with my siblings and I knew I was going to be eating on Sunday. So Saturday could have been a fasting day, but it was just going to be a see how this flows. And I did get hungry in the later afternoon and I did eat and I didn't have a lot like I had leftover um, marinated or roasted eggplant with the pan sauce that I made from earlier in the week I had half an avocado I put some fresh Parmesan cheese on the eggplant too of course because I'm obsessed with Parmesan cheese these days um, and um, I also had a handful of chips, potato chips, I did, and I also had a bag of nuts, like a bag of them, pistachios, almonds, cashews, oh, this guy wants to be a douchebag, watch how, I, how that works, ha, <laughs> I got to go before you, homie, you could have been behind the truck, but now I'm going to stop at this light just because it was yellow, how do you like them apples? As you should, right? We don't have to rush through a yellow light, we're supposed to slow down and take caution. Anyway, so I did eat that on Saturday, and then a full bag of those nuts, which was three and a half servings, and I did have a pretty massive apple before bed, and a ton of water. Um, now, having said that, I have stuck to the 10K or better a day, so that was pretty rad. On Saturday, I ran seven miles. Yesterday, Sunday, I ran six and a half, I believe. Yeah, it was six and a half. And every other day was a 10K, 6.2. Maybe 6.24, maybe 6.4, but you get the drift. Oh, this guy's gonna pass me. Bye, douche. See ya. Hope that worked out for you. Passing me on a one lane road, by the way. I guess he should have left for work earlier. Anyway, bye. Um, <laughs> so, Sunday morning I wake up and I'm feeling good. Now, you know wasn't sure what the day was going to bring because plans were tentative but confirmed but then things were kind of loose in the morning my brother canceled ish for hosting at his house so then we moved it to my sister's house but still nobody decided on if we were eating like what we were eating and then finally I just called it and I said hey guys you want to have some chicken parm and they were down with that so I prepared chicken parm which I don't bread and fry my chicken I just put the chicken in the air fryer and then I make a pan sauce and I top it with fresh thin sliced mozzarella and a whole shit ton of grated fresh parm and it is out of this world I did make pasta because I had a bag of organic pasta that I wanted to make I did make a huge salad that was spring greens with chickpeas and shaved parmesan cheese tomatoes cucumbers and we had fresh Oh, fresh, fresh cheesy garlic bread. Yep, we did. And I had all of it, all of it, and then some, because I then went home and I had a pint of frozen yogurt, Ben and Jerry's, Cherry Garcia. And that was 700 calories. Now I know I probably ate way too much way too late because we didn't eat dinner until eight o'clock. And I know that this morning's weigh-in of 155.8, which is up, almost what is it 4.1 right yeah it's up 4.1 and honestly am I surprised no your girl went in like I went in hard I enjoyed that pasta I enjoyed that garlic bread and everything else in between we didn't have wine I thought we might but we didn't so and I had the ice cream all this to say that I have accidentally I guess by eating intuitively based on my body wanting to eat and me listening to it and honoring it rather than fasting on the fasting days, 
Um, I have eaten. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Now that guy was nice. A big old truck that let me go. Instead of the guy in front of me who literally passed me on a one-way road in each direction just to be one car in front of me. He's winning today. He's totally winning. But anyway, so all that to say that I have accidentally, I guess, pushed myself into maintenance mode because I have eaten every day for the last one, two, three, four, five, six days, and today's Monday number seven that I'll be eating. Now, I take the average of what I have weighed in each morning. You can do it with me. Do the math. 150.1 plus 152.3, plus 150.3, plus 151.3, plus 150.9, plus today's 155.8. Add that up, you get 900 and something. Divide it by six, and you get 151.78, I think it is? One, yeah. So, without even intentionally trying, your girl's in maintenance. Look at that. Look at how that worked out. And this is why I've done the snake diet the way that I did, or prolonged fasting is what I guess it is, right? I mean, truly, that's what it is. Cole Robinson just put a name to it. But, so I've done my prolonged fasting protocol. The first three months I did rolling 72s. Sometimes I did the uh, four days, whatever that comes to, 72 plus 24. 96. So rolling 72s and rolling 96s. That's what I did for the first three months. Dropped just about 50 pounds and then put myself into maintenance for a couple of months. One month at a time. Intentionally. Never restricting anything, as you can see. Not only, and I'm only telling you that I've had two pints of ice cream, never mind all the chocolate Hershey's dark chocolate nuggets that I ate since Wednesday to Sunday. And never mind the superfood bark that I made, which I ate a whole container of, by the way. And, of course, fruit and other good foods, you know. So, <laughs> I did this with intention because for me, a lifestyle that restricts anything is not going to be a lifestyle that I can maintain. I don't want to live a life of restricting, ever. I love prolonged fasting because it isn't restricting, it's just delaying. So I somehow got into maintenance mode. That wasn't the plan. But I also know with my brother moving to Massachusetts in a couple of weeks, not even, less than 10 days at this point, oh, Johan, I'm gonna miss you. I'm so happy for him though. And his name's not really Johan, it's just what I call him and he calls me Irene, so. Go figure. Love him. Um, really excited for him. He's moving on the 31st. So this weekend coming up, we're going to spend time with our family too. My parents are coming up from Virginia and they're going to, I guess, help him pack and move. And we're all just going to get together and chill and eat and drink and be merry. And it's going to be amazing. But I'm allowing myself Saturday to indulge with the family and then going into my own fast beginning Sunday. And that's a choice. Um, I want to end this month strong and clean and empty. I do not enjoy feeling full. And I can say that during these last six days, I haven't reached a point of being stuffed, which is excellent. So when my brother had asked my sister and I to come over to his place this, for, this, for dinner yesterday, which was the original plan, I wasn't gonna say, oh, I'm fasting, because that's the beauty of fasting. It's flexible as fuck, and you just make it work for you. And so that's what I did, and it was a blessing. I had such a great time with my sibs yesterday. I love them to pieces, and, um, you know, really looking forward to being together with the family this weekend. But I am going to be mindful today. I'm going to dial it in. I'm going to be a little bit cleaner about my diet. Um, I am having some leftover corned beef because I hadn't had any for St. Patty's Day and um, my homie Nicole, she made it and so I'm gonna enjoy some corned beef with lunch and a big salad and a little bit of cabbage and then that's it, you know? The rest of the day is gonna be super, super clean and um, I'm feeling good about it, guys. 
I'm feeling really good about the fact that I am pretty much near maintenance. I will see the 140s, and I do think that I'll see them before the end of March. So let's see what happens, but it was a surprise to me. Never intended to get into maintenance so early. I was thinking that was gonna be my April feet, and um, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I have to get into the office. I just wanted to share that update. I was really excited. Oh my gosh, guys, and this dress, which I mean, you can't really appreciate because I'm sitting in the car, but this dress is a wrap dress, right? And I have been wearing this since 2005. I wore it as a size 24 and I'm now rocking it as a size eight. And it is actually a little loose on the ends, but because you know, it's so forgiving because it ties, I can rock it and I'm so excited about it. I love this dress. I wore it in 2005, like I said, when I was a size 24, and I questioned my fashion since then because I had jeans underneath it, and I don't know why. But then I lost the 120 pounds in 2012, and I got to rock this during restaurant week in 2013, and I thought I looked good, and now I'm like, oh, hey, girl, hey. So I hope this lasts forever and ever because I just love this dress. Anyway. That's it guys. I'm wishing you all the best, sending you love and light, and remember that you are capable of handling anything that comes your way today and every day. Stay strong. Talk to you soon guys. Have a great one.